Iminatuntai dos na Congressman Manhoban Guahan is now called to order, and I'll call on Representative Blas Chiron for the prayer. Kinini Tata Ilehinia Dani Spiritu Santo, Amen. Tatad Mami ni Gai Gihau Gilangit, Umatuna ina Anmu, Umamai Lai Gobiat Nomu, Umafatira Sipentomu, Asigitano Koma Gilangit. Nai Ham Pogu Nui Kadahaani na Agon Mami, Dona Sihi Ham Nui Diban Mami. Taigwihi in a sisi i do midi beham siha, za tamu ham pumupuluna infan basna gita doshon, lo nafan libraham gitaila zi. Amen. Si zoos unganegi maria bula hau grasha, si zoos kai gi zahabu, umatuna haun chitori si famalau and zamatuni finana gomu hesus. Santa Maria nanan zoos tatazuti marisa pago zani oran finata mami. Amen. Tazazuti da hu safu i isla, zuas and gagagao zani Santa Maria and Carmelin bendisi i tautau gilagwa simrani. Fan mana zuzut representa i menhoben zani in gagagao hao, now in bay representa i menatati. Amen. Santa Maria and Carmelin, tazazuti ham. Inini tata i lihinia zani spiritu santu. Amen. Thank you, Representative Blas Tyron. And I'll call on Vice Speaker Richards for the national anthem. Oh. Thank you, Vice Speaker Richards. I now call on Representative Kintaniza for the Guam hymn. <laughs> Thank you, Representative Kintanita. I now call on Representative Santos for the Inafresi. Inafresi, Gininima Stafkilu, Gihina Soku, Gima Stafkalo, Gikorosoni, Danima Sibu, Naninas, and Yahoo, who present my sadu, 
Thank you, you may be seated. Roll call. Representative Bloss Tyron. Thank you, do. Representative Dehelig. Estegarito. Representative DeGrasha. Present. Representative Dinsman. Representative Asihan. Representative Flores. Thank you, do. Representative Garrido. Representative LeBang. Present. Representative Lorenzo. Representative Maige. Representative Munya Brett. Representative Pareda. Present. Representative Perez. Present. Representative Kichichu. Present. Representative Kineni. Representative Kintaniza. Esteguizu. Vice Speaker Richards. Esteguizu. Representative Sablon. Representative Santos. Esteguizu. Representative Taga. Representative Trinidad. Speaker Valencia. Representative Vicente. There is a quorum. Mr. Leader, you're recognized. Mr. Speaker, I call for the approval of the legislative journal dated February 29, 2020. There's been a motion to approve um, the, our leg legislative journal dated February 29, 2020. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. <laughs> Mr. Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move to waive items 8 through 11 of the, uh, of the session agenda. There's been a motion to waive items 8 through 11 of our legislative session agenda. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Mr. Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move to have Bill 40-32, 39 32, 38 32, and 33 32 be given their first reading. There's been a motion that the bills stated by uh, Mr. Leader um, be deemed to have their first reading. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Mr. Leader? Mr. Speaker, I move to waive items 14 and 15 of the session agenda. There's been a motion to waive items 14 and 15 of our legislative session agenda. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Mr. Leader? Okay. We're now in motions. Does the chair hear any motions? We're now on uh, the second reading file, uh, bill number 40-32. Um, Representative LeBang, you're recognized. Okay. Sorry, just one moment. Um, Mr. Speaker, I move to place Bill 40-32 to the second reading file. There's been a motion to move Bill number 40-32 onto the second reading file. And to discuss, are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. <laughs> Mr. LeBang. Mr. Speaker and fellow colleagues, COVID-19 made learning from traditional face-to-face -face learning to online learning or even a hard copy learning. As a college student, I feel the hardship that this shift in learning setup has made. With the hardship that students face with this new learning environment, it urges me to introduce Bill 40-32, which seeks to exempt students except high school and college students from jury duty. 
We all know that jury duty is an important civic duty. However, it hinders students to fully engage themselves at academically. From missing work, doing makeup assignment, missing quizzes, and making additional time to make up work on top of rigorous and challenging classes. As a Guangyi Congress representative from the University of Guam, these are some of the sentiments of my constituents. According to Dr. Ron McNish of the University of Guam, students have failed classes, received lower grades, or had to withdraw from school, and thus lose their tuition because of the current jury service rules for students. I have classmates and friends who have to do this pre-COVID era. With the current challenges we experience with online class, it will be harder for students. Let us ease students' life and let us exempt students from jury duty. Mr. Speaker and colleagues, I urge you to support this measure. And I'm open for any questions. Thank you, Representative LeVang. Any other member on the motion? Representative Flores, you're recognized. Jesus, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, I'd just like to echo the sentiments of my colleague and co-sponsor. Uh, this bill, Bill 40-32, uh, is a measure of relief uh, drawn from many negative experiences from students uh, who have had to serve jury duty, uh, which have adversely affected their educational experiences. We've heard this several times from students at the university um, since, since, before, since I first started my term last year and then also um, our most recent GYC outreach at the university. Um, where we, we, we received feedbacks from students and this was a major concern. And uh, it's, it's telling also by the fact that this was introduced by uh, Mr. Professor Ron McNinch, Dr. Ron McNinch before, as well as uh, Vice Speaker Talina Nelson in the 35th Guam Legislature. However, we have not uh, yet seen the, uh, any proposal actually be written into law and provide that relief to students. So of course, it affects educational experiences, um, in, including attending classes, completing homework, and taking exams and um, yeah and although a similar relief in the form of legislation has been produced and or proposed and introduced in other bodies um, it is up to our body the youth congress to provide this much needed relief to ensure the continued and likely improved educational experiences of all island students should this measure pass thank you representative flores uh representative blast tyron you're recognized Mr. Speaker, I just wanted to quickly express my support for this, uh, for this bill because I, I have known at growing up here and attending school here um, that a lot, of, you know, a lot is expected of, of stu a students anywhere. They have to um, you know, do work, they have to do different assignments, different quizzes, and um, especially you know, in university, that kind of pursuing higher education only brings more of that, of that academic demand. And so, you know, considering all that our, that our students have to deal with, you know, pre, even pre-COVID, they, they had to deal with a lot. And because of that, I'd just like to, to thank the sponsor, Sijos Masi, for, for introducing this, because I do see it as beneficial for, um, you know, just relieving students of some of that added pressure that could come from missing classes, missing tests and assignments um, due to this. And at this time, I'd also like to make a motion to add my name as a sponsor, as a co-sponsor of the bill. There's a motion to add um, Representative Lost Tyron's name as a co-sponsor of the bill. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Mr. Lost Tyron? Jesus um, That's it. Yeah. Thank you, Representative Lost Tyron. Um, any other member on the motion? Uh, Representative Santos, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I just wanted to express my support for Bill 40-32 as well. I was at the committee hearing when we discussed this bill and the conversation came to the point of who, sh which students should be exempted from jury duty. Is it only students that are taking classes Monday through Friday, eight to five, or is it the entire student, uh, is it the entire student body that should be eligible for this? And we discussed it in committee and we decided that every student should have the opportunity to uh, to further their education without uh, the difficulties that come with 
serving in jury duty on top of your school responsibilities. So we made that amendment. The language currently, currently reads that an exemption for uh, any officially enrolled high school or college student shall be eligible to uh, waive their jury duty responsibilities. And with that language in mind, I think that this bill serves as a testament to how the youth can serve, at, how the Youth Congress as a body can serve uh, the rest of our youth and the rest of Guam's student population no matter when they serve school. So that way we as a community can move forward in our education and move forward in bettering our community. So I just wanted to once again echo my support for Bill 40-32 and I would like to thank the committee chairwoman, uh, Representative Garrido for holding the committee hearing and being able to uh, allow us to, as a committee to discuss those concerns. And I would like to thank Representative LeBang for introducing this bill. And yeah, I would like to express my support for this bill as well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Sanchez. Any other member on the motion? If none, um, Representative LeBang, you're invited to close. Mr. Speaker, before I close, I would also make a motion to add Representative Javen Santos as one of the co-sponsors of this bill. There's been a motion to add Representative Santos' name as co-sponsor of this bill. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Representative LeBang. For all the college students, I think this measure would help us better. And we all know that next week will be finals week for us and not actually finals week because it's last week of classes, then finals week. Then, yeah, I just want to take, take this opportunity to thank my co-sponsors and as well as those who expressed their support on this measure. And I move to place this bill on the third reading file. There's been a motion to place bill number 40-32 as amended by the Committee on Public Safety and Judiciary into the third reading file. Are there any objections? Mr. Speaker, my apologies. Uh, would, I, would it be possible to make a motion to add Representative Garrido as a co-sponsor of this bill? Okay. So can you withdraw your motion? I please? move to withdraw. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Leader. Okay, uh, now we're dealing with the motion to add Representative Garrido's name as co-sponsor of this bill. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Representative LeBang. Mr. Speaker, now I move to place the bill to the third reading file. And now there's been a motion to place bill number 40-32 as amended by the committee to the third reading file. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Um, next on the agenda, bill number 39-32 as amended by the committee. Mr. Speaker, I motion to um, move Bill 39-32 um, to be spoken or to be discussed um, after the other bills. Okay. Um, there's been a motion to um, place at the bottom of the second reading file Bill number 39-32 as amended by the committee. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, Bill number 38-32, uh, Representative Flores. Jesus Masi, Mr. Speaker. I move to place Bill number 38-32 in the second reading file. Uh, there's been a motion to place Bill number 38-32 onto the second reading file to discuss. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, a motion passes. Representative Flores. Jesus Masi. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. 
Thank you for this opportunity. This moment now is a very important one for our lives and for our future and for our children. We need, this, we need this bill for ourselves, the youth of Guam, and for all our children. Within our language are our roots, our history, our culture, and our life. Um, so this, this bill, bill number 38-32, seeks to add two youth members to Ikumishon, Ifinut Samoru, Zanifinat. The Commission on Chamorro Language and the Teaching of the History and Culture of the Indigenous People of Guam. Um, yeah, so the intent of this is just, of course, to ensure that language revitalization efforts, language preservation efforts are uh, being catered and tailored uh, to those that are in most direct receipt of these and in those who, who require um, these efforts most, the youth of Guam. Um, what we seek to do is add a youth member, one appointed by the governor and, and approved by the Youth Congress, and then um, one, one that, oh, I'm sorry, one appointed by the governor, and then uh, one appointed by the Youth Congress who does not have to be a member of the body. Um, I, I have shared this bill with Ikumashoni uh, Finot Samoto already uh, with the board. They've, they've uh, talked about it in their, their monthly meetings, their official monthly meetings, their public meetings. Uh, they have reviewed it, they have given it their blessing, and they are very excited uh, to see youth members serve on the board. It's, it's a first for the Commission, and it's a very important stepping stone as, as our island is experiencing uh, a period of cultural renaissance, of, of language renaissance. I, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Representative Flores. Any other member on the motion, on the main motion? A Representative Kenney, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would just like to um, throw my support to uh, Bill 38-32. I believe that um, the Chamorro language and culture, especially as um, Representative Flores put it, the renaissance of um, the Chamorro language and culture should definitely be something that the youth is uh, more involved in. Um, youth leaders especially should be, um, you know, at the forefront of trying to bring the rest of us uh, along towards, you know, the revitalization and hopefully the more widespread usage of our native language here on the island. And I, you know, I look forward to seeing youth representation on the board. Uh, Masi. Thank you, Representative Kineni. On the main motion, any other member who wish to speak? Representative Kintaniza, you're recognized. Good morning, everyone. I would like to speak in support of Bill 38-32. Now, obviously, as those before me have spoken, it is quite relevant that we have youth representation on this board because of the cultural renaissance going on and the efforts to revitalize our language. Having youth perspective on the board will provide the board with the necessary understanding of how youth experience tomorrow education as it currently is and hopefully provide necessary improvements when needed. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention, and this was discussed in the committee meetings, was that the youth appointed um, representatives on the board will have to be fluent speakers themselves. We understand the difficulty in finding youth who are fluent. However, that is the requirement of board members as is, and we felt it necessary to keep that requirement even for the youth member in the bill as it is. We decided to allow the bill to be discussed on the floor and if anyone has any objections to that or would like to make an amendment, you can do so. But we feel that the legislation as it currently is, is appropriate, but we were willing to have a debate about that here on the session floor. That is all, thank you. Thank you, Representative Kintaniza. Any other member on the main motion? Uh, Representative Kichiju, you're recognized. Jesus Masi, Speaker, who supports the Estina bill because I feel that it's really needed to empower the youth of Guam and it'll help the youth want to learn the language because without language, there is no culture and without culture, there is no language. And I'd also like to add my name as co-chair. There's been a motion to add Representative Kichichu's name as co-sponsor of the bill. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Uh, Representative Santos, you're recognized. 
I'd like to uh, ask some questions if, Ms. if Representative Flores would yield. Representative Flores? Again. Okay. I'd just like to, well, first let me start off. I'd just like to thank Representative Flores for not only introducing this bill, but bringing it up to Ikumashon to, to get their feedback and to uh, discuss with them about what this bill would entail for their committee. And so with that being said, uh, in your discussions with uh, Ikumishon, were you, did they provide any uh, feedback on recruitment of these youth members? Uh, you know, as Representative Kintaniza, or as the chairman of the committee who heard this bill stated, um, you know, that may be uh, diffi a difficult task, you know, to recruit fluent Chamorro youth speakers. And so I was wondering if in the discussions you've had with the committee, did the recruitment of that youth member uh, come up about like how easy it would be, how difficult it would be, and where, uh, where the recruitment for these types of positions would start? Like where would you go looking for these uh, members? Um, so that is my question, Mr. Speaker. Representative Flores. Jesus, Masi, Pari Finaisenmo, Representative Santos. Um, yes. So, so the the discussion regarding uh, whether this requirement, this fluency requirement, should be put in the bill, even for youth members, uh, of which we know many do not do not speak Tamil fluent fluently, right? Uh, it came up throughout many points. It came up when I was first writing the bill. It came up uh, in the committee. It came up, uh, yes, when I spoke to uh, Ms. Anne-Marie, Saina Anne-Marie Arceo uh, at the Commissione Fino Um and, and through it all, uh, it, was, it was always a very, a very um, two-sided thing, right? Like, do we add youth uh, to make them involved in the process um, and we make it accessible to them, or do we uh, uphold set forth by law, the only body uh, that is required, that is mandated to, to, um, to have their conduct entirely in, in Gifino Tsumoru. Uh, yeah, so, so it's definitely been uh, a point of, of concern. One thing we did do in the language of the bill is make it so that the person that the Youth Congress elects or appoints does not have to be a member of the Youth Congress. It can be anyone between the ages of 14 to 25, uh, that is fluent in the Chamorro language and active in its uh, revitalization and preservation. Uh, so that, that kind of widens the pool. And aside from discussions with uh, Saina Guinifi, Saina Anne-Marie Arceo, uh, where, we, where we mentioned like a couple of people that we thought, that we know personally, right? Of course, it would have to go through the process and be at, at the, uh, the uh, will of the speaker, but uh, there, there are people, I'm sure a few of us can think of a few people right now that would be able to fill this position and contribute uh, very wholeheartedly and very well to the position. So aside from, uh, from that conversation uh, with uh, Saina Guinifi, there, there wasn't any, uh, and other than the language in the bill, yeah, there wasn't much discussion. I hope that, that satisfies the, the inquiry, Mr. Or Representative Santos Cidos Fasi. Representative Santos, does that satisfy your question? Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And yes, it's good to know that even if uh, the discussion of like where to find the represent or the youth members of the commission is not was not discussed, we know that there are certain people that are that are qualified for uh, this position that have the fluency requirement. If you guys are already discussing particular members, you know. Uh, uh, pending the appointment process. So it's good to know that this, this seat will not go empty if there are people that are already in discussion to fill this position. Um, so yeah, thank you. Uh, another question that I had, Mr. Speaker, was in regards to uh, section four of the bill. I was wondering if the primary sponsor could speak to uh, the intention of uh, section four and why it's significant to point this out in the bill. Uh, Representative Flores, do you yield? Again, again. Okay. Yes, so um, section four, I can read it out loud for, uh, for the listening audience as, as well as for our fellow colleagues. 
um, prohibiting double representation. Each member of e-commission shall serve under only one capacity as defined in uh, subsection 88103. Yeah, so um, this, this was actually language copied from past legislation passed by this body, um, adding youth representation to, I believe it was the Climate Change Preparedness Council. Um, and it was, a, it was a, a pretty common sense thing to add. So it prevents, it prevents let's say, the youth member uh, who is eligible, eligible to be a youth member um, and who may also be, let's say, working at the University of Guam, the Chamorro Studies program at the University of Guam or, or at any of the other, um, the other bodies who have representatives. Yeah, so it prevents them from serving both and it, it ensures that there's a, a full slate of people from across all spectrums, uh, so preventing double representation so they can't serve in both positions. I hope that answers the question. Um, Representative Santos, does that satisfy your question? Yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Representative Flores, um, and uh, thank you for introducing this bill. I just wanted to get uh, clarification on those few points. And with that being said, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I wholeheartedly support the intention of this bill. I believe that this bill will provide the commission with the perspective that we need not only to perpetuate the language in uh, the adult population, but the steps that need to be taken to perpetuate the language in the youth population. Um, in my previous terms in Youth Congress, I've introduced bills highlighting the issue of the Chamorro language law. Uh, current Chamorro language law states that uh, ch the Chamorro language should be taught all three years of middle school and the first two years of high school, but that has not been achieved, even though that it's written under law, for whatever reason, whether it be the, ch the impacts that it has on our current curriculum or uh, whether it's budgeting issues. But I think that uh, Chamorro language preservation, especially in our youth, who will be the ones to perpetuate it in the future, is so important. And I'm hoping that youth members in the commission could point out many of these issues uh, and whatever issues they feel are holding back the youth from uh, practicing the native language, whether it be uh, issues of access, issues of uh, classes, uh, issues of tuition costs, these are issues that I'm hoping that the youth members will be able to state from their perspective or the perspective of their peers. Uh, and I think that the commission could greatly benefit from that uh, conversation being had in their meetings. And so I'm in full support of this bill. I thank the sponsor of the bill for uh, introducing it. Uh, I thank the sponsor for answering my questions and you know the issue of whether whether or not it will be easy to easy to find Chamorro language speakers or you know should a person who is not fluent be on the board to discuss you know their personal issues with uh, why the bill or with why they are unable to achieve their fluency whether that perspective uh, should be uh, heard on the the board or on the commission is uh, another issue, but just in terms of functionality of the commission, uh, I understand why the language is the way it is, um, and I'm sure that there's other ways for those youth who are struggling to learn the language to have their voice heard by the commission, um, and you know, with those avenues, I don't see why this bill should not be supported because youth representation on this board would be an ultimate benefit for the board and for the future perpetuation of the Chamorro culture and the Chamorro language. So I support this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Santos. On the main motion, any other member who wishes to speak? Representative Blas Tarin, you're recognized. Jesus Malasi, Mr. Speaker. Um, we support the SD. Sin ilinguahi mentadza hit. 
Cosa importante es ti y para te proteger y finanaguen sa inata y manyanata de niguela de nguelu. Da para hu manifesta gi fa magoen matungu da uma unfan cuentos y lenguajen tomorrow. Es ti nasinangen gos menagahit ginin y comprendeku. Um, anun contusi un tauta ni lenguaje na y comprendi hu malam gi ilunya. Angin un contusi gui gi lenguajinya propiu hu malam enal gi corazonya. If you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in, a langu in his language, that goes to his heart. And that's something that we need to encourage amongst our menhoven to learn and defend our language and preserve it for future generations to come. It is part, an essential part of our identity as peop the people of Guam, and it is most definitely important to preserve it um, so that we have knowledge about who we are and what our future looks like. It is a unique part of our island and essential to our identity. So I just want to say, Sizos Maasi Todis Hamzu, Pari Sapoti Estina Legislation. Then Sizos Maasi, Senor Flores, put Estina Legislation. Pues Pagu, Behu Fitma, I Naanhu, I Legislation. At this time, I'd like to add my name as a co sponsor of this, of this bill. There's been a motion to add Representative. Blast Tyron's name as co-sponsor of the bill. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Thank you, Representative Blast Tyron. Any other member who wishes to speak on the main motion? Vice Speaker Richards, you're recognized. I'd just like to add on to the, um, uh, the response to the question of the recruitment and the troubles that we would have finding uh, somebody to speak it. Well, yes, uh, I'm glad that we've identified current uh, youth, youth of our population to qualify to serve as the youth members on this commission, but uh, I also would like to point out that um, institutions such as the Haral Academy and the direct immersion uh, tomorrow programs will serve as a direct feeder. We might not have an explosion of Chamorro speakers, but uh, maybe a gradual increase. And I, I believe we can, we can recruit these commission members from there. And I'd, I'd also like to add that um, the importance of this bill is not just because we're having a renaissance in our, in our language right now, but it's also to serve as reparation for the damage that was done in our previous generation, who were discouraged from speaking our language because of uh, negative connotations. They were taught that if you spoke anything other than English, that, that you were seen as unintelligent or, or incapable of doing anything meaningful with your life from the stories that I've been told. And, and seeing this legislation uh, really um, speaks to my heart that we're not only repairing this, this negative connotation, but, but turning it... Um, reverting it into something where, where our language is something coveted, something that we want. And I hope in the future, it doesn't remain as this, this coveted skill, but becomes the norm with, with our youth and, and the people of Guam. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Speaker Richards. On the main motion, any other member who wishes to speak? Representative continues, I believe you've spoken already, but you can, I'll allow it. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I forgot to request this earlier, but I would make, like to make a motion to add my name as a co-sponsor to the bill. Sure thing. Uh, there's been a motion to add Representative Kintanese's name as co-sponsor of the bill. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Kintanese. Any other member on the main motion? Representative Dehile, you're recognized. Suzus Mossing, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'd like to echo the sentiments of our, our members today. And I do, uh, I I do want to voice support for Bill 38-32. Uh, and I've heard a lot about um, our, our youth are our future, and that we will be future leaders of tomorrow. And so I think that it's only um, imperative that we are included in decisions made today, in decisions that will affect um, not only our generation, but will include intergenerational, um, um, intergenerational um, support. 
So in a way, I, I do believe that it's important for all of us to be a part of the table and part of this, the discussion. And this bill helps us uh, to achieve that. So just Masi. Thank you, Representative Tahili. Any other member on the main motion? There are none. Um, Representative Flores, you're invited to close. Mr. Speaker, uh, I'd just like to give a don't clue to all my colleagues uh, for the outpouring of support. Uh, I know Al just said that, we're, Mr. Leader just said that my bill is taking very long, so. <laughs> but I, it's very telling of where we want to see our, our language um, and what we'd like for it. Uh, things mentioned writing past wrongs, our colonial history, Representative Richards, thank you, intergenerational transmission. Uh, and I think it, the bill also provides a very symbolic, uh, meaningful, and of course practical addition to the board. So symbolic in the sense that other youth are seeing that it is possible for you to uh, speak in, in our indigenous language, for you to speak what, what was spoken for uh, thousands of years. Um, and of course, just adding the, the personal experiences of youth to further strengthen revitalization efforts uh, and ensure that, that yes, the language does carry on and, and we strengthen it. Uh, the number of speakers has been decreasing, as we all know, we've, we've all heard it so much, but uh, let, this, let this bill, um, let the work that's being done now everywhere throughout the island and even beyond the island um, uh, revive our language, not la la, if you're not. Uh, Thank you, Representative Flores. And do I hear a motion? Ms. Fenta, uh, I, I motion to move um, Bill 38-32 to the third reading file. There's been a motion to place Bill number 38-32 as amended on the floor to the third reading file. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. <laughs> Representative De Hilig, you're recognized. Uh, to do as Masi, Mr. Speaker, I move to place Bill 39-32 into the second reading file. There's been a motion to place Bill number 39-32 as amended by the committee onto the second reading file to discuss. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. <laughs> Representative Daily. Buenas and half a day, e congresson manho bengwahan, zeni communidad. About a month ago, we completed our general election. We voted for our senators, our Guam Education Board members, our public auditor, delegate to the House of Representatives, and three members to the Consolidated Commission on Utilities. This was my first election, participating in more ways than I could as a voter. I trained with the Guam Election Commission and served as a clerk in both elections, and worked with the Guam Youth Climate Strike to learn more about our next leaders. I learned one thing, and that is we need to increase our youth participation in government in more ways than we already do. And if we are old enough, mature enough, to run for seats in the Guam Youth Congress, where we can enact change and argue a future in which we desire to achieve, then I know that we can do much more as youth to impact our future. There is no debate on whether or not the climate crisis will affect us. And the world knows that of our biggest threats is the oil and fossil fuel industry. We rely too heavily on old energy that continue to affect our climate and younger generations, where youth voices aren't typically represented. And when we have legally binding contracts that sign away decades into future generations, then we need to have youth at the table with equal power to make decisions. Bill 3932 opens the opportunity for youth to run a platform in which we are held accountable and where we want our energy to come from. Thank you, Representative Tahili. On the main motion, any other member who wishes to speak? Representative Flores. Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'd just like to express my support of this measure. I know it, um, it went through its uh, committee process, and we've, we've had a lot of discussion on um, making an 18 year old, making 18 year olds able to run for the, the CCU. Um, yeah, so in my personal experiences, um, when, when the, the KEPCO power plant was first being approved and there was a kind of a community movement to, to, to oppose it, right? To oppose it for something 
uh, more, more renewable to oppose uh, just or to advocate for the adding of more renewables into their proposed power plan. Um, I, I participated in the process. I attended a few of the, uh, the hearings. I submitted testimony. And then it was, it was pretty disheartening uh, at the final, the final decision when it was unanimously approved, the fossil fuel power plant, something whose effect, something that affects, would not really affect those on the, on the uh, CCU, uh, maybe their children, as is, as is the rhetoric, but that rhetoric didn't seem to work before. So I think, um, yeah, I, I felt powerless in that moment. But of course, this bill seeks to, seeks to amend that, and it leaves, um, it allows the people of Guam to choose whether an 18-year-old uh, can serve on the uh, CCU. And I think I can attest to the competency and the capacity of youth, uh, even as, as young as 18-year-old, as 18 years old to, to serve on the CCU and make decisions that, that don't affect their children, not just their children, but also themselves and us as we sit here today and all those that we, we represent. So I, I uh, provide my support for this bill. Thank you, Representative Flores. Representative Sanchez and then Representative Kennedy. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to uh, state my support for this bill as well and to discuss, uh, just to mention, you know, I've discussed the issues uh, that, I've, I've discussed many of the issues um, in terms of representation and representing the interest of the people of Guam uh, in many of the capacities, such as the CCU, uh, with the sponsor of the bill. And, you know, we both expressed our frustration with, uh, you know, things that have happened, uh, decisions that have been made. And, you know, with Representative DeHelig introducing this bill, he's offering us a solution to uh, some of the challenges that we have in terms of, you know, figuring out who can be that person to, uh, push a proper climate change agenda uh, on the CCU? Who can be that person who will be able to balance, you know, the needs of Guam with the needs of our futures, the needs of the futures of the world? And, you know, climate change is not an issue that's just going to go away on its own. And, you know, despite Guam being a small island, we all need to do our part to address climate change. And I think that you know, allowing uh, youth to be elected to the body, you know, still having to go through the campaign process is a benefit to our democracy. You know, uh, the uh, CCU being an elected body, allowing, the, allowing this bill to pass and allowing more people access to the opportunity to not only run, but to campaign and to be able to address these issues, I think is a benefit to the people of Guam. And I hope that the rest of the body sees that, you know, despite the fact that many of the, youth, of the leadership positions in our government are uh, 25, such as uh, being able to run for senator, um, that, that this bill does not, this bill does not uh, restrict any, uh, does, not res does not cause any uh, representation that is detrimental to the people of Guam. I would say it just allows access to uh, more emerging young leaders to be able to, s to speak their voices, you know. As a Youth Congress member, I've advocated for uh, youth representation in various capacities, you know. I've uh, it w I've addressed the issue of IBOGs in the school, public school system, and, you know, the youth voice is uh, a voice that needs to be heard more, and I think that's a narrative that we're seeing in this session today, you know, whether it's the commission or representation on the CCU, I think that uh, the youth voice, especially now in terms of climate change and our political climate today, is an important voice that needs to be listened to. And I think that these bills that are discussed today 
are a good step forward in listening to that youth voice. And I just want to thank Representative Dehelig for uh, pushing the envelope and making and pushing to make this type of proactive change because I think that ultimately it'll serve as a benefit for the people of Guam. Uh, and I support the bill and I hope the rest of the body does too. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Santos. Representative Kennedy, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank uh, Representative Dehelig um, for introducing this measure. I would also like to uh, echo the sentiments of uh, Representative Santos, where I say youth, represent youth representation is important across the board because as a generation growing up with these current problems in this current political climate, we are going to be the generation and future generations who are going to be the most affected by the effects of climate change. Now, consulting with the youth doesn't necessarily mean, you know, listening to, or um, enacting every idea that we have because it's our future. It's us providing a voice reasonable and debatable so that we can maybe show that this might not be detrimental in the next five to 10 years, but this will be detrimental in the next 15 to 20 to 25 years because that's what research has been showing. Um, especially when it comes to climate change, I believe uh, even with the context of this bill, with the approval of the new uh, GPA power plant, I believe that not enough people were listened to on the climate change area of this um, bill because how can, we not, how can we say the climate's important, our land is important, and we know that fossil fuels are not the future of energy anymore, but we still go and reinvest in fossil fuels between now and the year 2045. In 2045, I believe I will be 40, almost 50 years old. That's a long commitment to make, you know, for, and for those sitting on the CCU board, they are probably, I don't mean to judge anyone's age, but I can probably assume that they all sit at least 50 to 60 years old. So this will, they will probably be gone with this contract still going on that binds our youth, our current youth. So maybe it's important to have voices that will be affected throughout the whole part of this, you know, long-term fossil fuel contract. And I would, I like to thank uh, Representative Dehelig again um, throughout the 32nd Guam Youth Congress Representative De Helig, Representative Santos, and even um, former uh, Representative uh, Isabel Valencia, they have been the champions on environmental causes. They have been the ones to really bring attention to the issues that involve uh, climate change, that involve the environment, and that involve you know the youth. So when we talk about this bill specifically, I support um, lowering the age to 18 years old. I believe there's probably going to be a higher bar for trying to get an 18, 19 year old elected to an elected body. However, you know, this is a hurdle that we as youth probably must overcome, all the nuances about how we might not be educated enough or how we, not, we might not speak um, in the same language as those sitting on government boards. But it's important to hear the voice of those that will be affected, you know, more than just 20, 30 years from now and to seriously look at the impact it will have on our island and our future generations. So I would like to, hold, I would like to support um, Bill 39-32. I believe we do absolutely need representation, especially when it comes to public utilities, as we try to shift towards more green solutions. And I hope that uh, the CCU and other bodies that we try to add youth representation to seriously take the issue of you know, having multi-generational voices because these are multi-generational issues now. Thank you, Representative Kennedy. On the main motion, any, any other member who wishes to speak? Representative LeBang, you're recognized. <clears throat> so, and Mr. Speaker, um, at first when I read this bill, I interpreted it very differently, but so my first interpretation of the bill is that we want to ensure you representation of on the commission, but at the same way, I, during the committee hearing, I proposed 
adding an, an appointment mem mem youth member in the commission. However, um, at the same sense, um, my fellow members in the committee had enlightened me that it is true that mostly members of the commission are elected officials. And for me, I think lo lowering the age of 18 is a good thing, but at the same time, it's a matter of organizing. It's a matter of grassroots campaigns between us, the youth, pushing up our fellow youth to do run in this board. And at the same time, I can see that with this bill, it would allow us to have more youth voters to come out on the election day and vote for their candidate to represent them in, let's say, this commission. And that is one thing that I think la is lacking within our community right now is that youths are not coming into coming into the polls to vote for our leaders who's going to represent us and that is devastating and i wish with this bill i hope that it would garner more youths to come out on election day and do vote for their representation and with that being said i want to say that i do support this bill and I would like to thank Representative De Hilig for we've been going back and forth with this bill in one time and it's a good way to be educated about something that is more something that we can hold someone accountable if we elect them instead of someone we just appoint. And I do support this bill. This is all. Thank you. Thank you, Representative LeBang. On the main motion, any other member who wishes to speak? If there are none, um, Representative De Hilig, you're invited to close. Thank you guys all for your attention. Um, I, I do want to speak on the point of uh, Representative LeBang. We talked about um, the differences between an appointment seat and an elected seat. and so. There are the pros and cons, and um, I just wanted to point out that uh, we are not asking for, for free handouts, for free appointments, or we're not de um, uh, asking to be appointed to these seats. Um, we are determined to earn the respect of our community uh, for the betterment of our future, and so that's how we decided uh, working with elections. Uh, we do know how difficult it is to, um, uh, to get elected, and so we must earn the respect of the community and um, earn our spots. Uh, I, I want to end with, if we want to support our leaders of tomorrow, then we must give them the equal opportunity to make the change today. And thank you, Representative Tehilig. And do I hear a motion? Yes, you do. Um, I motion to uh, place Bill 3932 into the third reading file. There's been a motion to place bill number 39-32 as amended by the committee. Onto the third reading file, are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Next item on our agenda. Bill number 33-32, uh, Representative Santos, you're recognized. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to make a motion to place bill 33-32 on the second reading file. There's been a motion to place bill number 33-32 into the second reading file to discuss are there any objections. Seeing as there are none, motion passes. You may continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Bill number 33-32 was an effort on my part to do research into what laws are currently already in the books and what can be done to improve on what is currently law. So this bill is to improve a section that already existed in local law called the Improvement District Law. Uh, according to my research, the Improvement District Law, well, the language of the law states that uh, any community can come together to create an improvement district and collectively fund certain community projects. And 
uh, from my understanding, the way that this bill has been used uh, throughout history is mainly, is mainly through funding the infrastructure for subdivision development. That's uh, infrastructure such as power poles, water lines, and sidewalks in subdivision developments. So that way the entire community can share the cost of bringing in that infrastructure uh, if that infrastructure is not already currently available. Um, so functionally, that's what the Improvement District Law has been used for, but I saw a great opportunity for the Improvement District Law and the way that the law is written, it can go towards funding so much more than that. It can go towards funding playgrounds, it can go towards funding um, recreational facilities for the entire neighborhood to share. And I feel like improvement, this improvement district law is a great way for, you know, camaraderie uh, within your neighborhood to get projects done. You know, keeping in mind this bill was drafted earlier on in the year before, you know, COVID was uh, in a place where, you know, large gatherings and community gathering was, uh, it was, was more accessible than it is today. But uh, nevertheless, in the long term, uh, the amendments that I'm trying to propose to this improvement district law are to allow for more facilities for uh, community building and for, uh, na for, your, for neighborhoods to become closer and to have more, uh, facilities, you know, uh, in, this, in this modern day when we're, uh, when all of us need a car to have access to certain facilities such as a gym, such as playgrounds, you know, ha having the ability for an entire community to come together to fund recreational facilities in our local neighborhoods can be a benefit to not only individuals, but to building the morale in the community as a whole. So the way that this bill has been amended is to allow for advertisements for public recreational facilities to be used to uh, fund uh, these improvement district laws, or these improvement district uh, facilities. Uh, the way that the improvement district is written, uh, improvement district uh, facilities are paid through your uh, property tax. So your property tax is the cost of the facility project is amortized and added onto your property tax for a period of five to ten years. Um, so the way that this bill would read is that advertisements could be placed in public recreational facilities as a way to offset that cost to maybe individuals who are less able to afford um, that cost added onto their property tax, or uh, just to allow opportunities for more community projects to grow. Um, I see this improvement district law amendment as a way to at least start the conversation of what improvement districts really mean to Guam and how they can be approved. Our improvement district law, is this improvement district law created to uh, create more subdivisions and offset the cost of building infrastructure such as, uh, you know, sewage lines and septic tanks, or can this improvement district law be used for more community building practices? Can this improvement district law be used to build uh, community gardens or uh, other resources that children can take advantage of to uh, benefit the neighborhood as a whole. And so, Mr. Speaker, the attempt is to offset the cost, uh, not only to uh, the government, but to the neighbors by allowing this advertisement space uh, as a revenue generation opportunity so that, the, so that these public recreational facilities kind of pay for themselves. Um, I see this bill as uh, a win-win in terms of uh, adding onto what is currently into law to 
continue to benefit the community. You know, as Youth Congress, we uh, tend to be very wide-eyed in terms of looking at what can we add, what are new programs that we can be adding. Uh, so this was my opportunity to look at what's already in the books that could be improved to benefit our community. And so I hope that uh, the body sees the benefit of having public recreational facilities kind of pay for themselves through advertisements. Um, obviously, the bill has restrictions to what type of advertisements to be in place. Um, and, you know, the, the commission, the Guam Land Use Commission, still has the right to approve or disapprove any of these projects as is already written in the Improvement District Law. Um, so, yeah, the way that the process works is that the community would have to petition for this type of project to be developed. And so that type of petition, uh, you know, going around the neighborhood and collecting signatures can also be a way of, uh, you know, starting conversations within your neighborhood. Um, so that's why I hope that uh, the rest of the body sees the benefit in uh, this bill and these amendments to our current improvement district law. And yeah, oh, Mr. Speaker, I also do have uh, one amendment that I'm hoping can start an interesting conversation. Um, I have already put it in the shared drive um, for the body to review. Um, it's just an amendment to, uh, add to the list, the current list of what type of facilities uh, can be used to fund or can be funded by this, um, by this bill. Uh, so the amendment adds community garden to line two, page 10, so that uh, community garden is added to the list because to me, I see the benefit of uh, Clarifying specifically, uh, you know, this was not even something that I thought of until the committee mentioned it uh, in the committee meeting, and I thought that that was a great idea. And to me, adding this language is a sign of where this type of projects, where these public recreational facilities uh, can gain inspiration and, you know, come up with creative solutions to help the community, you know community gardens are important and even in, even during this time uh, in COVID, you know, when people are, when people are still struggling to put food on the table, uh, having an opportunity to fund the development of a community garden uh, sounds like a, a great opportunity to help the community as well. So I just wanted to expressly state it in the language that uh, community garden is one of the options that the public recreational facility improvement district law can fund. And I'm hoping that if anyone else has any other suggestions of what other projects can be added to this bill, um, that they feel free to make amendments as well. Um, with that being said, uh, that's my amendment, Mr. Speaker. Just Thank you, Representative Santos. Point of clarification. Um, is it supposed to be page, line 10, page two, because the bill is only four pages long. Oh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Representative LeBang. Yes, it should read line 10, page two. Um, yeah, I'll fix that, thank you. Okay. On the Santos Amendment, any member who would like to speak? Seeing as there are none, are there any objections? Representative DeHelig? Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to say um, I, I support um, in any way where we can add uh, community gardens to, to neighborhoods, uh, given that uh, food scarcity, food security is, is, is important to our community um, and, and all of Guam. I, I just think that adding this language or, or adding these two words to the, the bill would only make it better. So this is Mossy. Thank you, Representative DeHealy. Any other member? Who wish to speak on the amendment? Representative Flores, you're recognized. Sisosmasi, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm not sure who I should pose the question to, but should the language be amended to read um, including but not limited to, uh, to make it more um, inclusive or possibly uh, expansive of other, other recreational facilities? Representative Santos, would you like to yield? Um, sure, I'll yield. Um, 
I'm open to that amendment. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, the the reason why I did an include I, I did including but not limited. I didn't add that language is, you know, my concern of what type of projects. You know, I, there's a balance between uh, what type of projects um, should be funded with this type of legislation versus what's not, and you know, just with the conversations that have had that have been had in the legislature about you know intrusive advertisements and signage law, I saw the incentive of not allowing an endless amount of uh, advertisements to be developed into the uh, you know on our island that are too obtrusive and or that are too obstructive. I'm sorry. And you know that's kind of why I didn't include the but not limited to language. But you know at the same time the Guam Land Use Commission still has the authority to uh, reject uh, any project under this improvement district law for whatever reason they see fit. So if the body believes that having that including but not limited to language is a benefit to this bill, then I will support the will of the body. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Flores, does that satisfy your question? Again, And are you proposing an amendment to the amendment? Uh, not at this time, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Flores. Any other member on the amendment? Is there none? Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, amendment passes. <laughs> Representative Sanchez, on the main motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, I just wanted to ask the body uh, for their support and any uh, discussion of how this bill can be improved uh, would be beneficial, but I hope the bill, I hope that the body sees the benefit and supports this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Sanchez. On the main motion, any other member who wishes to speak? Representative Blas Tyron, you're recognized. Cesar Smalasi, Mr. Speaker. Um, I do support this amendment, but I just had a question for the sponsor of the bill. If okay, um, but uh, Representative Blas, um, we're on the main motion now. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Sorry. Do you still want to pose your question? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, Representative Sanchez, do you yield? Yes. You may continue. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to specify like about section three, if you could just like um, give an example of maybe an, like an advertising space. I'm just trying to get an idea of like what would it, what it would be, if that makes sense. Yes, uh, so advertisement space uh, from my understanding would be uh, I, I, I use the term advertising space to l kind of keep it vague and leave it up to the interpretation of the commission, um, you know, allowing the commission to promulgate any additional rules or regulations necessary. But just how I envisioned it would be, um, you know, kind of the way that uh, currently, uh, you know, some playgrounds and some community areas have like, Sponsorship, sponsorship signs, you know, outside the gate or outside of the facilities. Um, I think of like, uh, it, it could be anything from physical signs to, you know, banners on gated, uh, on gated recreational facilities. Um, yeah, I just, I just see, I just see it as an opportunity for the community to develop. Uh, these projects and incorporate within it what advertisement space means to them and what advertisement space could be sold at what at what cost or what price to be able to fund the project. Uh, you know, it depends on the size of the project and it depends on the the it depends on what the community would like. But stuff like banners, um, signs um, you know, maybe murals on certain government or certain uh, public facilities that state advertisements, uh, that's kind of what I envisioned an advertisement space uh, 
to be and for businesses to incentive to have an incentive to uh, buy this advertisement space in these community facilities where there would be a lot of traffic, uh, you know, as an, a benefit to uh, their companies when they purchase the advertisement. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. Does that satisfy your question, Representative Bloss? Yes, thank you. Any other member on the main motion? Vice Speaker Richards, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to ask a question for the sponsor, if you would yield. Do you yield, Representative Sanchez? Yes. Uh, just requesting some clarification. Uh, page three, item B, just that first sentence, it's a little confusing for me, a little circular. Landowners may own a portion of the total advertisement space such that all landowners who desire to own advertisement space shall solely own at least one space. I'm a little confused on that. Can you clarify that for me? So uh, this, is, this was sort of uh, an attempt to balance you know, the way that the current improvement district law reads as everyone, uh, everyone in that community pays a portion of the, the improvement district cost on their property tax. Um, you know, if let's say for example, there's a community wall of sponsors um, and the improvement district uh, loss, and let's say there's about 20 people in the neighborhood that want to uh, have their improvement district, this improvement district for whatever facility they're trying to fund. Um, if, the, if the advertisement space is divided into 20 spaces and everyone owns at least one, then each one can be personally sold uh, or rented out as advertisement property in the hopes that someone would be willing to purchase it and that the funding from that cost would then be used to fund that personal, that person's uh, cost of the improvement district uh, facility uh, cost that's being charged on their property tax. Um, that's just to clarify uh, that they can own at least one space, depending on the size of the project, they could own multiple and multiple uh, spaces could be used to offset the property tax. Um, I just added that into language so that way at least every individual will be able to have some sort of offset on their property tax without having to have the complication of you know, sharing one advertisement space and it becomes an issue of who owns it. Um, this is language so that each landowner who is funding this improvement district owns at least one space that will go towards uh, offsetting the cost to their property tax on their improvement district project. Um, yeah, so I hope that answers your question. Does that satisfy your question, Vice Speaker Richards? Um, I think so. Can I just follow up and, and ask um, is that saying that the advertisement space needs to be divided up into at least as many landowners? Because if, if there's less advertisement space than landowners, then they can't all have one space, right? Um, so the language reads that all landowners who desire to own advertisement space shall solely own at least one space. The way that I, imp I envisioned this improvement district law is, oh, I'm sorry, is that uh, if a community wants to build a project and if some families can afford it and some don't, this could be a way for the families who can't afford that extra cost on their property tax to offset that cost. Um, so the families that do want to sign up for this public recreational facility advertisement can sign up and so it allows everyone who would like to sign up to be able to offset the cost of this improvement district but those that do not want to offset the cost and would rather just pay it off of their property tax and not have to deal with the complications of you know, owning an advertisement space, that's uh, up to them. Um, so yeah, the, the way that I envision this bill is to balance you know, funding community projects in communities that need them but maybe the individual family owners aren't able to afford it. Um, 
So not every person in the improvement district needs an advertisement space if they don't want it, but anyone who so desires uh, can own one under the law. Uh, and the improvement district law requires a plan and, you know, a plan in how the improvement district is going to be developed and that sort of improvement or that sort of advertisement space would be a part of the plan and whether or not the improvement district uh, gets approved is up to the community to petition the Guam Land Use Commission and the Guam Land Use Commission to approve. So yeah, not every single person in the community needs a uh, uh, advertisement space on these facilities, but uh, those who like one shall be able to own at least one. I hope that answers your question. Does that satisfy your question, Vice Speaker Richards? One more follow-up, sorry. Uh, so I, I know not everybody would need one, but you, the language is those who would desire to own the space shall own one space. So if everybody so desires, there needs to be space created for each person within that property. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other member on the main motion? Representative Flores, you're recognized. Excuse Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'd just like to provide my quick support for the bill. Um, I, I, I agree with, with past speakers, anything that opens up possibilities for future development of facilities that will be beneficial uh, to the overall well-being of our entire population is welcome. And uh, the fact that it's being paid for not by the government, not by taxpayer funds, but uh, by a partnership, by people coming together within the community who want to improve their community, uh, like, like Representative Santos said, brings that, that sense of community uh, back and it, it allows these facilities to be funded by, by other means rather than uh, government uh, uh, revenue, especially in a time uh, such as now. And I'd just like to um, commend the main sponsor uh, who wrote most of this, or who wrote the bill uh, in its entirety. Uh, just it, It's very technical, but it seems very thorough. Um, and as he said, uh, it's in line with the recently amended um, signage law by the 35th Guam legislature. I believe it was Speaker Barnes uh, who spearheaded that effort. And then, um, yeah, so upon first reading, you might think that it, it encourages or promotes sign or light pollution, but the language does give the rural body, uh, the Chamorro Land Use or the Land Use Commission, adequate, adequate flexibility to ensure that signs do not become uh, more detrimental than beneficial to the public that uh, will reap the benefits of, of these spaces. Thank you, Representative Flores. Any other member on the main motion? Representative Quintanilla, you're recognized. I'd like to express my support for this bill. I find the idea of generating revenue in this way very innovative, that is all. Thank you, Representative Quintanilla. Any other member who wishes to speak? Seeing as there are none, Representative Santos, you're invited to close. I'd just like to thank uh, those who testified in support of the bill. Um, and I'd like to thank Representative Flores for providing uh, that point that at the end of the day, this bill's intention is to create public-private partnerships with the community and these businesses that would be buying advertisement space so that that would go towards funding the projects that the community would like. You know, the intention is to come up with creative solutions to provide for the community their needs. And so through this public-private partnership, with under this improvement district law to be able to fund advertisements that would then go to fund community spaces that would be designed that would be designed in a way that has to be approved by the Guam Land Use Commission. I see this bill as a benefit not only towards uh, facilitating the the future of our of our community, but by facilitating uh, the strength of our bond with each other as community members and uh, neighbors uh, living under one Guam because of the improvement district process, the, the process of, of gaining petitions, of signing petitions from your community, going door to door knocking, uh, advocating 
the person who wants to start this project can be advocating to their neighbors saying, hey, I want to start this project and I feel like this project would not only benefit me, but benefit all of us in the neighborhood. I'm hoping that this bill will start those conversations. Uh, and this bill also goes to remind uh, people of this improvement district law currently as written and show people that this is a way for uh, the people of Guam to fund community projects as well. Um, just allowing advertisements allows public-private partnerships to uh, find funding for these community projects for those community projects that might be more difficult to fund for certain families, which is totally understandable, but you know, providing them a solution so that they can still continue to support their community, uh, I think would go towards uh, building a better Guam. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I wanna thank my colleagues for uh, engaging in the conversation, asking questions, trying to come to an understanding of this bill, because uh, I think that this bill ultimately uh, serves the good of our communities. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to move to place bill number 33-32 uh, as amended on the floor uh, into the third reading file. There's been a motion to place bill number 33-32 as amended on the floor into the third reading file. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. We've now exhausted all items on our second reading file. We'll now move on to the second roll call. Representative Bloss Tyron. Oh, present. Representative De Healy. This is a second roll call, yeah. Uh, Mr. Through. Speaker. Yes. I make a motion to reflect Representative Kennedy on the first roll call and have second roll call reflect first roll call. Okay, um, we'll do the first one. Uh, there's been a motion to have the first roll call reflect Representative Kennedy. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Now there's been a motion that second roll call reflect first roll call. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. Awesome. And we're now on the consideration of the daily file. Third reading file. Bill number 40-32 as amended by the Committee on Public Safety and Judiciary and amended on the floor. Introduced by Representative LeBang, Flores, Blas Tyron, Santos, and Garrido. An act to add a new section 22107I to chapter 22 of title seven, Guam code annotated, relative to exempting students from jury service. Roll call. Representative Blas Tyron. Ungan. Representative Bloss Tyron, aye. Representative De Helig. Ungan. Representative De Helig, aye. Representative De Gracia. Aye. Representative De Gracia, aye. Representative Flores. Ungan. Representative Flores, aye. Representative LeBang. Aye. Representative LeBang, aye. Representative Pereira. Aye. Representative Pereira, aye. Representative Perez. Aye. Representative Perez, aye. Representative Kichichu. Hungan. Representative Kichichu, aye. Representative Kineni. Hungan. Representative Kineni, aye. Representative Kintaniza. Hungan. Representative Kintaniza, aye. Vice Speaker Richards. Aye. Vice Speaker Richards, aye. Representative Santos. Aye. Representative Santos, aye. Speaker Valencia. Aye. Speaker Valencia, aye. Bill number 40-32 as amended by the committee and amended on the floor received 13 ayes, zero nays, and many excused. I can't count right now. Bill number 40-32 is duly passed by this body. 
Now on bill number 38-32, as amended on the floor, introduced by Representative Flores, Kichichu, Blas Tyron, and Kintanita. An act to amend section 88103 and section 88104, and to add section 88103.1, all of chapter 88, title five, Guam code annotated, relative to adding youth representation to e commission e fino chamoru, then e fino nagwin e historia, then e lenatla e tatotanu, the commission on Chamoru language and the teaching of the history and culture of the indigenous people of Guam. Roll call. Representative Blas Tyron. Hungan. Representative Blas Tyron, aye. Representative De Helig. Hungan. Representative De Helig, aye. Representative De Grasha. Aye. Representative De Grasha, aye. Representative Flores. Hungan. Representative Flores, aye. Representative LeBang. Aye. Representative LeBang, aye. Representative Pereira. Aye. Representative Pereira, aye. Representative Perez. Representative aye. Perez, aye. Representative Kitichu. Aye. Representative Kitichu, aye. Representative Kineni. Hunga. Representative Kineni, aye. Representative Kintaniza. Hunga. Representative Kintaniza, aye. Vice Speaker Richards. Aye. Vice Speaker Richards, aye. Representative Santos. Aye. Representative Santos, aye. Speaker Valencia. Speaker Valencia, aye. Bill number 38-32 as amended on the floor received 13 ayes and zero nays and is duly passed by this body. Bill number 39-32 as amended by the Committee on Public and Municipal Affairs and amended on the floor. No, no, just as amended by the committee, sorry. Introduced by Representative Dehealy. An act to amend section 79101 of Title 12, Chapter 79, Guam Code Annotated, relative to allowing youth to serve as members of the Consolidated Commission on Utilities. Roll call. Representative Blas Tyron. Hungan. Representative Blas Tyron, aye. Representative De Helig. Hungan. Representative De Helig, aye. Representative De Grasha. Aye. Representative De Grasha, aye. Representative Flores. Hungan. Representative Flores, aye. Representative LeBang. Aye. Representative LeBang, aye. Representative Pereira. Aye. Representative Pereira, aye. Representative Perez. Aye. Representative Perez, aye. Representative Kichichu. Hungan. Representative Kichichu, aye. Representative Kineni. Hungan. Representative Kineni, aye. Representative Kintaniza. Hungan. Representative Kintaniza, aye. Vice Speaker Richards. Hungan. Vice Speaker Richards, aye. Representative Santos, aye. Representative Santos, aye. Speaker Valencia, Speaker Valencia, aye. Bill number 39-32 as amended on the floor. Oh, sorry, as amended by the committee received 13 ayes, zero nays, and is duly passed by this body. Bill number 33-32 as amended on the floor. Introduced by Representative Santos and Flores. An act to add a subsection K to section 69104 and to add a section 69131, all of chapter 69, title 21, Guam code annotated, relative to creating an incentive for advertisement space in improvement districts according to the improvement district law. Roll call. Representative Blas Tyron. Hungan. Representative Blas Tyron, aye. Representative De Helig. Hungan. Representative De Helig, aye. Representative De Grasha. Aye. Representative De Grasha, aye. Representative Flores. Hungan. Representative Flores, aye. Representative LeBang. Aye. Representative LeBang, aye. Representative Pereira. Aye. Representative Pereira, aye. Representative Perez. Aye. Representative Perez, aye. Representative Kichichu. Hungan. Representative Kichichu, aye. Representative Kineni. Hungan. Representative Kineni, aye. Representative Kintaniza. Hungan. Representative Kintaniza, aye. Vice Speaker Richards. Hungan. Vice Speaker Richards, aye. Representative Santos. Aye. Representative Santos, aye. Speaker Valencia. Speaker Valencia, aye. 
Bill number 33-32, as amended on the floor, received 13 ayes, zero nays, and is, hereby, is duly passed by this body. We've now exhausted all items in our voting file. We'll now move on to brief extension of remarks. Any member who wishes to speak. I understand this is also our final session, so if you have parting words for your colleagues, this is the best time to do so. Representative Kenney, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice Speaker, um, former speaker and current uh, core chairman, uh, Representative Javen Santos and my fellow uh, colleagues here at the Guam Youth Congress. It has been my pleasure the last term since the 30th and the 32nd to serve alongside all of you, as this is probably the last time I will be speaking on the Guam Youth Congress floor. I really wanted to take this time to thank each and every one of you with your cooperation, with your ideas, with all your bills and um, uh, res resolutions that, you know, as a youth body, this was probably one of the more active organizations I have been a part of, probably since high school. Uh, it's very important that we continue to engage in these topics and from everywhere from education to healthcare, to the environment, to the youth inclusion in all of these. It's important that we continue to use our voices to um, uplift not only our community, uh, not only our generation, but all generations around us. It, you know, it continues to be important also to review and um, discuss policies because we are the future leaders of this island. As the youth now, as youth leaders now, we decide the course of the island through collective, through collective bargaining, through collective listening to our community, through multi-generational collaboration on how we are going to get things done for the island. And it's really been a pleasure the last two years, serving for four years, that this body has done a lot. There's a lot of great ideas that have come from this body, from our committees, from our work. Then there's tons of passion for maybe even just individual topics, but there's tons of passion, at least to steer this island into a better direction. And I'm so glad I got to meet all of you, the youth leaders now of this island. And I'm proud to call you guys colleagues. I know uh, I might not get along the best with everybody. I may have some, um, <laughs> I may have some problems or I may have some um, differences that sometimes I get a little bit uh, agitated at and I don't feel like resolving till maybe months later. But it's important to recognize that, you know, in this climate, we do not just, um, debate for the idea of debate's sake, but we debate to understand each other. We debate to understand where the other person comes from, their background, and how they think it will affect the island, and not just my way of thinking, my way of pushing things forward, and my vision for the island. It, you know, it's not me, it's us. And that's eventually what it's going to be. So I really want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart that as the last time I'll be speaking here at the Guam Youth Congress floor, it's been a pleasure. And I uh, wish the best for the 33rd Youth Congress, and I wish the best for each and every one of you. Uh, happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Sisus Moasi. Thank you so much, Representative Kineni. Thank you for your service. Um, any other member who wishes to speak? Representative Santos, you're recognized. I just wanted to say thank you to the body. Um, thank you for thank you to the people who have voted for me when I represented. Uh, as I represented Barragata for the past, uh, what is it, six years now? Um, and yeah, I just, from high school all the way up to now, uh, the Guam Youth Congress has been a great opportunity and a great experience to learn and to grow as, uh, as a leader, as a policymaker, and you know, just being able to share that with Everyone here, everyone that has come and gone in the Guam Youth Congress, every new face that I've met who has their own story, their own interests, and their own idea of what a better Guam would be like, and who took up the mantle of Guam Youth Congress to try to solve that, uh, I just wanted to thank all of you. And I would just like to say that I'm, I'm glad that my time has been uh, 
so productive, and it's been thanks to the support of everyone. And I'm so excited to see uh, what the 33rd Guam Youth Congress, oops, sorry, what the 33rd Guam Youth Congress uh, will get done. And to those of you who are sitting in here who are serving, uh, who have been elected again for another uh, two-year term, I just wanted to say congratulations to all of you and to continue to do the good work for the people of Guam. Um, uh, to all the leadership that has been elected and to all uh, of the committee chairmen who are going to be serving in the 33rd Guam Youth Congress, I just want to emphasize that I hope that you guys understand what a great opportunity Guam Youth Congress uh, is to enact change on behalf of the youth of Guam uh, that goes to benefit all of the people of Guam. You know, Guam Youth Congress is what you make of it. So if you are a change maker, um, you will do whatever it takes to make that change. And I, I'm excited to see what future Guam Youth Congress members do in the future. And uh, yeah, for, the, for anyone who's serving in the 33rd who has any questions about policy, about writing bills, uh, who need any advice on how to address certain issues from a policy perspective in Guam Youth Congress, um, feel free to reach out for me. I, I, I will always be a resource for the Guam Youth Congress. Um, and yeah, I'm, I've enjoyed my last six years serving in the Guam Youth Congress. Um, I'm excited for what's ahead and I'm excited to see what's ahead for the body. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, for the opportunity to speak and uh, thank you for your service in heading us as a leader. And I'm excited to see what is in store for all of us in the future. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Sanchez. Representative Quintanilla, you're recognized. I would like to announce that this will also be my final session as a member of the Guam Youth Congress. And I'd like to say that being a member of the Guam Youth Congress has had a tremendous benefit for me. I've really come into my own as an advocate of Chamorro rights, Chamorro culture revitalization, and decolonization. I cannot say for certain that had I not been in Youth Congress, I would have ever pursued any of those uh, ideals. I feel that the Guam Youth Congress has the ability to bring about political self-actualization. And it's had a tremendous benefit for me. It's helped me identify the, the hills that I want to stand on and plant a flag onto. And I hope that it can have that same benefit for all of you and for many more to come after us. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Kintanita. Any other member who wishes to speak? Vice Speaker Richards, you're recognized. This is also my last session in the Guam Youth Congress, and I just want to say thank you to everybody here, to everybody that I've served alongside with in the 31st as well. Thank you for a, an enlightening experience. I really knew nothing about public policy when I first joined in 2016, and I, and I, I wanted to take the opportunity to learn more, and this has given me that and so many more opportunities. Uh, I interned with, with Senator Shelton in the PAGE program. I've met uh, many, many people, many senators, uh, many key public figures because of my participation in the Guam Youth Congress. And I encourage you all, if those that are continuing on to the 33rd, to pursue those opportunities as well. Uh, I'm a very sentimental person, and coming from our first a uh, session in the, from the 31st at the public hearing room at the old Hessler place, to being in the great session hall of the Guam Congress building. It's a testament to, to what's in store for the Guam Youth Congress. And I look forward to, to seeing all of you fulfill that. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Speaker Richards. Representative Dehilig, you're recognized. Y'all are making me cry, man. But um, I, okay, I just wanted to say, uh, you guys are all my inspiration. Um, differences aside, you guys all inspire me uh, to be a better person and uh, to to fight for the things that I believe in. And and honestly, it takes a lot, you know. So thank you guys for that. I want to give a a big special shout out to um, Javen though. I mean, he was the first person that reached out to me 
and uh, Senator Regine Lee like to actually get involved in government. And so if it weren't for Javen, if it weren't for Senator Lee, um, I, I honestly, I don't know if I would like be as uh, vocal as I, as I am now. And so um, I'm glad and I'm thankful and I'm hopeful uh, for, for um, you know, the, the time to come. So thank you guys and I love you guys. Okay, bye. Thank you, Representative of the Healing. Any other member who wishes to speak? Representative Bluff Siren. Mossy, Mr. Speaker. I just also want to express a great deal of gratitude to each and every one of you who I served with this term. You all have made this experience just so wonderful. And it's great to see that not only am I surrounded by such intelligent people, but people who have compassion and conscientiousness towards the future of our island. Um, and, you know, when I first ran for this in my sophomore year, and unfortunately I lost, and then I was given the opportunity by the speaker to, to run for, uh, or I was told of the opportunity to run for Tamaning seat. And at that time I had left for a trip, so I, and I never heard of any notification. So I was thinking, oh, I must have lost again. But <laughs> when I came back, um, he actually got a hold of me and, and he had shared the news with me. And I ended up, you know, being able to just make it right before inauguration, before the start of the term. So I'm just so grateful for this opportunity and um, just especially to, to speaker who has been such a role model and all of you have been role model for me. Um, I remember meeting um, Speaker Valencia at a party, talking to him and, you know, he just won the scholarship. And I thought, wow, what an intelligent person. And, I'm so glad that I've gotten to work with him and each and every one of you because you have all showed me, you know, your different perspectives, your, um, your different backgrounds, and you've just made this experience so enriching. Um, and, um, you know, I know some of us, well, I'm not really a confrontational person, but like some of us may have different beliefs um, and I may not always vote yes. Most of the time I agree with you, but, um, <laughs> Um, I'm so glad that all of us stand up for what we believe, confrontation or not, and I'm just so thankful for this, this entire experience. And for those of you serving in the 33rd, I hope to work with you, um, and I look forward to maybe some arguments, but a lot of agreements as well. So, Sizu Asma, Sipad Hamzu. Thank you, Representative Blas Tyrant. <laughs> Mr. Baby Product. Any other member who wishes to speak? Representative Flores. Sizo Swasmi, Mr. Speaker. Malaguzu Nabayu Na Ihamzu Todu Ibula Agrida Cementu Ginini Mastak Kalumi Kurasonhu. Sizo Smasi Todu Mangai Giguini Pangu. Then Todu Mantai Guilokui. I'd like to extend to all of you my appreciation and a big thank you uh, to all those here today and those who couldn't be here as well. Uh, in the short time, only a year that I've been a part of this body, I've come to learn all of your, your deep passion um, for our people and your commitment to it, and both witness and share in, in all of your work. So thank you for that. Um, I trust that you all will continue the service you've started here and look forward to um, continue learning from you and being inspired uh, by your leadership. Viva Mina Trentai Dos, Viva GYC, Sizos Masi. Viva Sizos Masi, Representative Flores. Any other member who wishes to speak? Representative LeBang. I promise this will be short, okay. So, um, I just wanna thank everyone whose class session, whose today's session is their last session. Um, it's been a great honor serving with you and don't worry, I'll take all the wisdom that you've spread upon us to the 33rd and this, even you, Mr. Seeger, I know this is your last session, and I hope that everyone who's leaving this chamber, um, I hope that you find, still find a purpose to still serve the people of Guam and also the youth of Guam. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Representative LeBang. Any other member who should speak? Representative Kitichu, you recognize. Sisu Smasi, Speaker, I just wanted to wish you, Speaker, and everyone else whose last term uh, the best in whatever they have next for them in this lifetime. <laughs> uh, 
Any other member who wishes to speak? Thank you, Representative Kitchichi. Representative DeGrasha, you're recognized. Um, I just want to wish all of you guys, you know, in your future endeavors, good luck. And, you know, anything that you aspire to be, um, that you, you know, achieve that. And it was really great, you know, serving with all of you guys and, you know, talking with all of you, conversing. And, you know, um, you know, being able to hang out and see what you guys have to offer and especially what we have to offer to our community and, and to our youth. And, you know, um, you know, let's always stay connected, you know, just because you guys are leaving um, GYC doesn't mean, you know, we're not going to be connected. So, you know, we'll definitely use you guys as resources. We'll definitely stay com uh, communicating with you guys. And I just want to thank you for everything that's all of you done, um, especially in your, you know, just in your entire service in GYC and serving the community of Guam. But thank you guys and, you know, hopefully see you again, you know, in the future, not from too long from now. But, you know, good luck on everything that you guys have set out for your, your guys' goals and everything you want to achieve in life. Thank you. Thank you, Representative DeGrasha. Any other member who wishes to speak? Seeing as there are none, um, I'll also provide some remarks. Uh, good morning. <laughs> Uh, it's been such an honor to serve alongside all of you. Um, I'm proud to serve alongside young people who care so much about our island and community, young people who are devoted to effecting real and, and meaningful change. And I'm honored to also be surrounded by, by artists, by journalists, environmentalists, musicians, gardeners, gym enthusiasts, cultural dancers, ROTC cadets, and aspiring lawyers and scientists. Today, I'm surrounded by passionate leaders who are eager to, to affect change in any way they can. And it's been such a pleasure working with all of you in tackling the real issues from youth representation and leadership and improving public education to promoting mental health first aid and protecting our environment. I've never been, I've never been more proud to be a member of this body. Because we know firsthand that when society encourages the full participation of young people and recognizes the energy, imagination, and talent that young people can bring to the table, we as a people can come to better solutions to the problems that plague our community. And the Guam Youth Congress has provided me a home and a family for four years now. Here I've met lifelong friends, people who have helped me discover the issues that matter most to me. And I would just like to thank all of you for these last four years, for your friendship, for your trust, and your inspiration. And as we close out the term, I am more hopeful of what's in store for all of you, for all of us, and hopeful um, of the future of our island. Because soon enough, you will all be at the helm, affecting change with compassion and love for our community. And I'm looking forward to, to all of your future endeavors. Thank you so much, and Dunkley Nasidus Masi, to all of you um, for the opportunity to serve. And with that, are there any announcements? <laughs> uh, Representative Blastiron. Um, just a couple of announcements. First of all, um, on behalf of Tatuha, we just want to thank everyone who supported um, our Halloween drive through. We were glad to offer that to the community. We usually do a bigger function every year, but um, unfortunately due to COVID, we, we couldn't do our usual function. So we had to transition and there was a, a really good, a good turnout. Um, other than that, I'd just like to also um, just like extend um, any help, uh, any help anybody needs um, during this time. I know it's a, it's a big, um, you know, it's just a bit, there's a lot of things that are demanded of us during this pandemic, whether we're students or whether we have jobs. And I just want to, you know, extend that you can reach out to me um, if, you, if you ever need anything. It's important that we all keep, keep with, up with each other. We have interactions during this time because um, there are a lot of, you know, mental health issues that people could be going through. And they, they maybe, you know, they maybe don't feel comfortable sharing it, but just, just know that you can always reach out to me um, if you find yourself experiencing that um, and then we are also like trying to plan um, virtual bonding activities for Guam Youth Congress so even though you may not be um, in the next term right if you're if you're in Guam Youth Congress um, we will share the link with you to, to 
attend one of those activities like um, one of our GYC game nights. So um, yeah, it may not be the usual like really long scavenger hunt that Representative LeBang and I love to plan, but it's, <laughs> it's definitely, you know, it's something that will give us interaction during this time. And of course, more than anything, you know, we're, we're, we're Guam Youth Congress, but we are also all friends and, and one family. So we want to encourage that during this, these times as well. Thank you, Representative Blas Tyron. Uh, Representative Quintanilla, announcements, please. I'd like to announce that Representatives Lowen Flores, uh, uh, Vicente Tyron, and Shante Kitsitu, and myself have recently begun the process of establishing a uh, new organization uh, for the purpose of casual practice of the Chamorro language. I feel like having a sp safe space where people can try and practice the language, especially young adults, where we don't have to feel judged or uh, have to fear criticism or being uh, the butt of the joke can really have a positive effect on our language learning process. So I'd like to extend an invitation to all those present if you want to, uh, if you're interested in joining, we're calling the group Lugat Lenguahi and it's just a safe space for practicing the Chamorro language. Very casual, nothing too fancy. That is all, thank you. Thank you, Representative Quintaniza. Representative De Healy. Um, I just want to remind everyone that Public Law 34.110 will be enacted uh, come January 1, 2021, uh, the ban on uh, non-biodegradable plastic bags. And uh, just a special shout out, that was also uh, from the Guam Youth Congress, passed by the Guam Youth Congress, lobbied uh, to the legislature, and, and was, was duly passed. And so um, I encourage and employ, employ each and every one of you to uh, continue to think sustainably and also live more sustainable. So just massing. Thank you, Representative Dehili. Any other announcements? Is there, oh, Representative Flores. See, just massing. Uh, I know I sent it in the chat, but the 33rd is uh, most likely gonna be participating in the second annual Giving Tree uh, thing to benefit a few of our islands um, uh, children. So if you guys would like to join, you can take a card that has a wish list uh, and an age group, uh, you can just message in the chat or message me and I can uh, provide you a card and you can, you can donate. Yeah. Thank you, Representative Flores. Any other announcements? Oh, um, I'd like to announce that the inauguration of the 33rd Guam Youth Congress will be held on December 19, 2020. It's a Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, it's gonna be virtual. Well, it's gonna be in person, but it's gonna be limited uh, guests, so everybody's invited to watch um, via YouTube or the legislative channel. And you can have your watch parties after. Socially distanced watch parties, of course. Um, no more announcements? If there are none, uh, Mr. Leader, on the final motion. Mr. Speaker, um, I move to adjourn this session, Senate BA. There's been a motion to adjourn this session sine die, without day. Are there any objections? Seeing as there are none, motion passes. We are adjourned.